In today's video, I'll be sharing with you guys the newest Blender add-ons and updates, ranging from modeling, physics, animation, and even libraries. I'm pretty sure that you will find something interesting in today's video. So without further ado, let's jump right in. We're gonna start with Engon, which is a free Blender asset browser made by the folks at Polygonic, which are known for making high quality and successful Blender add-ons such as Materialic, Traffic, Aquatic, and most importantly, Botanic. The asset browser is dedicated to libraries that come with the add-ons made by Botanic, which I just mentioned, and it works by using asset packs, which are curated compilations of assets specifically made to be used with Engon. And it is really smart, allowing you to quickly search, filter, and spawn all of your assets that are probably tagged to your asset browser. It comes with a bunch of features to make your life much easier, such as snap to ground, add random transformation to your spawned assets, convert your asset to editable, and even the ability to revert to its linked version. Another tool that comes with Engon is the scatter tool, which allows you to scatter and select assets on the fly. In addition to the migrator tool, which helps to fix any errors occurring in your assets if you are using an older version of the add-on. And we can't forget that, even if you get the free version, you will receive starter kits for botanic, aquatic, traffic, and materialic, simply by completing a brief survey, which is a very generous offer from the developers. Next up we have Easy Patch, which is a handy tool for Blender that simplifies the process of creating and patching topology meshes. So, instead of a fully automatic topology generation tool, it allows you to draw patches with control over the edge flow direction, and you have the ability to create patches with 3 to 6 boundaries. And here is what the add-on offers. You can draw the boundary patch by simply dragging the mouse, making it easy to define the shape of your mesh patch. And from what I can see, you can customize the pattern of your topology, by changing the rotation to better suit your personal preferences. You can also adjust the pole position within your mesh, but please keep your poles away from the areas that are required to be bent when animated, because it can cause some issues. Another nice feature that comes with this add-on is the ability to switch between different patterns. For example, the zero pattern is recommended for clean topology, making it a good choice by default. And if you don't want to worry about tweaking the settings, or finding the right pattern, you can just use the guide mode. It works by suggesting a solution based on your input and providing modification suggestions for an improved workflow when retopologizing. Generally speaking, this tool can be useful for those who want to have control over their mesh topology and the direction of edge flow while maintaining simplicity and ease of use in your Blender projects. Still with new add-ons, we have Zendoc which is a Blender add-on that is all about enhancing your Blender workspace by adding a familiar window control bar to every area within the software, and it brings a lot to the table. For example, from what I can see, with toggle buttons, you can quickly switch between viewport areas or you can open them in separate windows, providing a smooth and intuitive navigation experience. You can also easily restore minimized areas in the viewport using the minimize buttons which can ensure that space settings, such as tools in the end panel visibility, are always preserved. Additionally, you can get control over the area of visibility, which can be done using system buttons, offering options to minimize, maximize, and close areas with ease, which I think can be really helpful, especially if your user interface is cluttered. And I think the addition of an expand and collapse bar makes this add-on really flexible allowing you to customize and adjust your workspace according to your preferences, which will definitely boost your productivity when working on your projects. Now, talking about updates, Botanic, one of the most popular add-ons for vegetation, recently had a major update with Botanic 7.0. Botanic has a great library of over 700 optimized and realistic 3D vegetation assets, which offers a variety of trees, grass, flowers, weeds, rocks, 
pots and some gardening assets. And I think this makes it a great solution for creating realistic landscapes, forests or any scenes that require some natural elements. But Botanic doesn't just let you add vegetation to your scenes, because it does a lot more than that. For instance, you can use real-time modifications to make changes on linked assets such as changing the season, brightness, hue per branch, a leaf, and so much more. If you remember, at the beginning of this video, we talked about Engon. So Botanic 7.0 converted Botanic from a standalone add-on to an asset pack that can be used with Engon or with Blender Native Asset Browser. There is also a ported Vine system to geometry nodes, with improved functionality according to the developers. And the best thing that came with the update is adding 111 assets and 4 scattering presets. An interesting addition is adding the BQ prefix to all blends and data block sand textures to avoid the name collisions, in addition to other stuff in this regard. By the way, if you are a Botanic user, you can check the list of the bug fixes that came with this update, which I think is interesting and can solve a lot of problems. Now, from vegetation to physics, we have Physics Placer, and this add-on is all about dynamically placing your object in Blender using physics. This can be useful for many general use cases, like putting multiple objects or fruits into a basket or placing objects on top of one another. And unlike the regular physics simulation where you have to manually add physics, adjust settings, and go over this process over and over again till you have a good result, using Physics Placer works in real time and it is super easy to use and set up. Firstly, you just need to set the collision object, which is a pivotal point that defines the dynamics of your scene. Then all you have to do is select the objects that you want to manipulate. And what that does is, it sort of brings all your objects to the center of the mouse, almost as if you have a magnet. Then you can simply click Q to start dynamically moving or even throwing your objects if that's what you're going for. And that's it. Now, if you're interested in animation and specifically stop motion, then you can take a look at Step Motion which is a user-friendly Blender add-on for crafting stop-motion style animations with ease and comfort. At least this is what it seems like. So, the add-on simplifies the frame-by-frame -frame animation process, which is used in traditional stop-motion animations by allowing frame manipulation using hotkeys, making editing a smoother experience. From what I can see, the add-on comes with a couple of features worth mentioning. For instance, the handy onion skinning feature that keeps your active frame visible while fading older frames to red and future frames to blue, which offers a visual guide to your animation progress. Another interesting feature is the real-time animation preview, facilitated by the step motion preview geometry node setup, which enables you to witness your animation in real time, eliminating the need to wait for the final result, which I think is really useful. Step motion actually goes beyond individual frames by supporting the creation of entire scenes. For example, the instant setup lets you duplicate frames without heavily impacting your computer, making the construction of complex scenes with varied animations kind of easy. The add-on also includes an animated clay-like substance to frames, which is generated procedurally each time you open the add-on. Moreover, it collaborates seamlessly with Warpy Step enhancing your animations with a kind of authentic clay motion feel. And last but not least, we have a very simple yet useful add-on called Auto UV, which is all about automating the process of UV unwrapping your objects. So if you're like me and the majority of Blender users, then you probably don't like UV mapping a lot, especially if you do it over and over again. So using Auto UV kind of makes the process easier. First of all, it is easy and simple to use. From what I can see, all you have to do is select your model and click on Auto UV and that's it. Your object is now fully UV unwrapped and ready to be textured. By the way, this add-on is free and it is simple, but if you want something better and that is gonna save you much more time and effort, then I recommend other solutions such as UV Pack Master, Zen UV, in addition to other add-ons that are very much worth it. So guys, if you are interested in these add-ons, 
you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.